Hi, hello everyone. Good morning, uh, uh, good noon, whatever the time zone you are. Um, I am myself Vinay. I'm the, leading the blockchain program office at SyncFab, and I work uh, very hand in hand with Dennis. My previous background coming from the PLM industry, working with Siemens, Airbus, uh, where I was leading the more the engineering uh, innovations into the uh, supply chains and the manufacturing. And today I will be um, it's like uh, presenting few slides about the product uh, features uh, along with Dennis. So hand over to you, Dennis. Thank you. Um, so uh, yeah, just to kick it off, you know, <clears throat> we have a pretty close knit team here at SyncFab. Uh, definitely a wide range of, of specialties and expertise uh, to bring this product to life uh, really for manufacturing supply chains as a whole um, across primarily what we're working in is automotive aerospace and medical um, so really bringing those those skill sets to the table how can blockchain make an impact and really ch really champion um, efforts for industry 4.0 um, in in that system so you can see here you know we have <coughs> different team members with a, a a range of experience you know, Jeremy our CEO um, I believe this spoke in a previous um, community presentation um, but we also have a few new additions to the team uh, with Urs coming from RUAG um, to help on our advisory board as well as Henry Robinson with a, with a suite of experience coming from the ERP space uh, being one of the founders that helped bring SAP Ariba to life um, and also du Duad Thompson, who has background in GM working in supply chains there. So really great team to bring to bring this uh, to life and bring it here. Let me just make sure. Reload this. One sec. Good old technical difficulties. There we go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So over, over our, our few, few years in existence, we have garnered quite a bit of different partners and clients, um, really focusing in manufacturing as a whole here in the US and slowly going more uh, internationally that I'll speak on briefly here. Um, we have some different partnerships uh, specifically here in the US with NTMA, uh, which is a huge uh, machining and tooling association here in the US that has over 1200 members of uh, suppliers um, here that are manufacturing, as well as SESME, which is a federal funded organization uh, really working on industry 4.0 initiatives um, for supply chains. And um, <clears throat> we, we also recently, that isn't on here, um, partnered with SwissMem, which is an international organization um, similar to the NTMA uh, located in Switzerland for an organization that works with their manufacturing sector there and has um, a range of manufacturing capabilities available. Uh, we do have a number of clients that have been working with us for different initiatives. They aren't all the same uh, solution that we might be working with these individuals, including you know, SpaceX, Lucid, Sikorsky. Uh, we'll kind of talk about the different product suites that we have uh, coming in the, in the subsequent slides. But really, you know, what we're focusing on is how can we create different blockchain solutions that can apply um, cost savings, time savings, security savings in the supply chain. You'll kind of see how we break it up uh, in some of our, our next slides. So just to give some background on the industry today, when you come to automotive, what we're really talking about is the parts that flow through the supply chain. So when you, when you take an individual car, you know, you're looking at about 30,000 individual parts, if not more, in a single part, in a single part car that have to be manufactured and assembled. <clears throat> so that's kind of the, the realm that, that we exist in, um, uh, really tracking and securing those individual parts as they, as they flow through production. Um, but here, there, <clears throat> 80 to 90% of supply chain purchases are happening in, in, the, in the long tail of the procurement cycle. Um, so what we see, what we see happening in, in the automotive industry is as things become more digitized and automated, 
there's becoming a, a more strict need for quality control, uh, compliance tracking, certification requirements, um, really data security. You know, how can we share this information across supply chains with different individuals uh, to make sure that the right stakeholders only have access to the right data? Um, <clears throat> and really, how can we help with increasing um, time savings uh, at the same time while, you know, decreasing potential threats from outside parties that want to, you know, um, take advantage of some supply chain insecurities. So we really see a lot happening uh, on a daily basis in this industry. I know not long ago we saw um, uh, Takata Airbags had a recall uh, of their airbags that costed them nearly 50 million, including uh, Volkswagen having to do a recall not too long ago as well. Um, so <clears throat> what we're looking at here, you know, how can those risks be mitigated, not only from a tracking perspective, uh, with tracking all this information of the parts being manufactured, um, you know, where those parts are, are, are essentially going in the end, end assembly, um, how that the data of those parts are being transferred with one another is is really is really critical for us when when we're building these uh, different products out. Um, so some of our main goals are you know to mitigate these risks right of of reducing product recall costs, uh, reducing um, part fraud, um, reducing time in the procurement life cycle, and really regain uh, cost savings in the procurement as a whole with providing these, these different verification tools, these different um, smart contract enabling uh, cost saving opportunities between suppliers and buyers, um, certifying product authenticity, uh, things like this that, that we'll dive deeper into in, in some of the, the product slides. Um, so you can see here that there's definitely a lot of action happening within blockchain as a whole uh, in the automotive industry. There's um, a number of different initiatives happening right now to really champion blockchain as a technology that's here to stay and how it can be added into different parts of, of uh, multiple industries. So <clears throat> on average, you know, we see one of the biggest advantages of having a some kind of blockchain infrastructure within your supply chain is is data security. Um, that's kind of number one. Uh, and you know, <clears throat> when we see these data security breaches now, almost on a weekly weekly basis, those can cost companies, you know, upwards to a couple million dollars, uh, depending depending on the severity of the breach. I think on average here, IBM estimated it as being just under $4 million for a potential data breach. So we're seeing companies like Volkswagen, BMW, Renault start looking into different blockchain initiatives to add into their, their supply chain now. So <clears throat> really interesting time to definitely be looking into this technology and building with it. Um, I think it's, it's nothing that's going to go away anytime soon. Uh, and it definitely has implications tremendous, especially in the automotive industry. Um, so just really quick, just some kind of background on where we see right now on some of the potential supply chain risks. Um, we, we see that in the procurement side, there's, there's a real need for, for much more confidence and with teams to, to source um, uh, manufacturing capabilities that they can rely on. Uh, a lot of a lot of top executives or companies don't feel confident in their abilities to do that. Um, also, you know, to tighten production schedules, reduce reduce unresponsive uh, supply chains, and and also secure the procurement data as a whole within the ERP systems. It's actually interesting when we, when we talk to different OEMs, the number of different ERP systems that they use is actually quite astonishing. Um, and the transferring of data between those ERP systems uh, can actually be a big risk. So that's something that, that I think we see blockchain having an impact as well, uh, especially on the procurement side, uh, especially with a lot of legacy systems that 
you see some companies using. Then we go into traceability, which is a huge one uh, for blockchain, where um, 80, 90 percent of parts SKUs fall in the long tail supply chain outside of the ERP. So how do you really track that information once it leaves your company uh, and make sure that it's only going to the to the proper hands that should have access to that? Um, <clears throat> and also, as I said, said before, you know, increasing costs of, of recall actions that have to occur, you know, those are only going up each and each time one one happens, which is which is you know definitely disheartening to see. And, and the last big one we're seeing is compliance and security. You know, how much, how much is wasted annually on fake part costs in different supply chains, um, having to reinstall and replace those parts, um, having different cyber attacks occur within the supply chain in different, uh, in different areas. I think one of the, one of the biggest areas of vulnerability too is, is once that data you know, say a part leaves your company, um, those other entities that that part is interacting with, um, you know, their data security is at risk. We see a lot of actual potential risk happening on the suppliers end. You know, once once um, once a part leaves an OEM to say an end-tier supplier, there's a, a lot of risk involved in that. And how do you make sure that that suppliers upholding the right compliance and security and has access to the documentation and, and information in the most uh, proper way. So I'm not gonna go through <laughs> all of this, but just the kind of high level opportunities that we see. Definitely on the procurement side, a lot of saving opportunities uh, with how suppliers are sourced. Um, also, uh, opportunities in turnaround times to improve RFQs up to 75% uh, that we see, you know, using different blockchain technologies such as smart contracts and things like that. Um, on the traceability side, uh, we, we see a lot of cost saving opportunities in the ownership of, of intellectual property of these parts and transferring that ownership. Um, so, and also in the long tail traceability of the part, once it leaves the OEM and goes to, you know, the tier one or N tier suppliers, um, really the cost savings of tracking that part from, from its origin is tremendous. And also, you know, compliance and security where we see blockchain, blockchain as a whole increasing um, security up to 80% over conventional IT architectures. Um, so now we're going to get kind of start jumping into what, you know, we're exactly building <laughs> at SyncFab. Now that we got to give you some background, what we're seeing in the industry, where we see blockchain kind of um, the different areas that it can impact and how we're, we're planning on building on that. Um, and, and it's only increasing over time. Uh, we see, you know, blockchain here to stay and, and having different um, just different advantages in multiple areas within the industry. So here at ThinkFab, you know, we started as a purely procurement company. Uh, we helped OEM source suppliers, especially in the end tier. So um, that was kind of our origin. And we worked with a number of different, different suppliers that ranged the gamut of certifications and compliances. Um, and this was before we, you know, understood, you know, the process of the supply chain, the procurement lifecycle, the post-procurement lifecycle, and then wanted to build additional standards and security on top of that. Now that we kind of garnered that expertise, okay, what are the different areas of implementation that we can start building these different applications? Um, <clears throat> so the, the suppliers that we do work with and still, or have worked with and still work with to today, you know, they, they range from um, ITAR, registered suppliers, AS9100, QS9000, um, cert certified suppliers. And we have worked with different internal ERP systems, um, you know, with Eric Oracle and SAP, as well as looking into new initiatives being brought in by the DOD uh, for new security standards uh, like NIST uh, that that we're super excited about to see how how we can make sure that that's implemented from the get-go. Just kind of give you an idea of, this is some of the suppliers that we've worked with in the past. 
um, really ranging the gamut of different materials, machining capabilities. Um, we actually have access to 10% of the US supplier market today. Uh, this is just include, this is just the suppliers that we've worked with. This doesn't include suppliers that OEMs uh, bring to the table. And you know, they usually have their network of suppliers that they want to work with, which isn't, isn't an issue. But we like to say, you know, we can provide them greater access to the end tier with some of the suppliers that, that we have a relationship already in the past. Um, <clears throat> so now we're going to jump into our, our product overview and really solutions overview and what we've built. Um, Vinay is going to spearhead this part, and I'm going to just add some additional detail here and there. But, but Vinay, you want to go ahead and take this part away? Yeah, sure. Um, I will continue with the same presentation. Probably you have to move the screens. Yeah, okay. just tell me when to move, then I'll, I'll move to the next yeah. one. So thank you very much, uh, Dennis. So as uh, Dennis mentions, uh, it's like what we are doing at the SyncFab. Uh, basically, uh, we are, uh, although the supply chain has a different um, components uh, into the overall solutions, but we are major focusing on the procurement uh, part of the supply chain and where SyncFab is really connecting the OEM and the buyers um, uh, via the all these uh, the disruptive technologies. And the whole platform is powered by the blockchain technology. That is where we are taking the advantage of this one. And our main key footprints also established in the two phases of the supply chain. One is the pro procurement and after the second one is the post procurement phase. So in the post procurement phase, usually every uh, company, although they have their own supply chain, but where the distinguishing um, differentiator we are bringing is that uh, many companies have the need for the like the um, very uh, low volume but high complex parts. That is where they look uh, where their existing supply chain could not uh, uh, feed that requirement. Uh, and also the second one is the traceability of the overall journey of the part into this supply chain. So that is where we are bringing the distinguishing um, <clears throat> features to the whole supply chain. So in the procurement, we have the different uh, MIS components, solution components. One uh, is a part RFQ dashboard where uh, multiple uh, MIS like RFQs uh, MIS coming in and out from the, and having the flow from the OEM MIS buyer to supplier. So we are managing the different RFQs. The RFQ dashboards are the creation of the RFQs matching the suppliers based on their capabilities, the order managements and the, the uh, overall, the uh, I will say the journey of the RFQs will be tracked uh, into the dashboard. Uh, we also have the another feature um, the, which is very uh, powerful and which will lot uh, leverage a lot much uh, this reward program uh, via MFG token. We have our own crypto uh, token where this is the first token for the manufacturing industry where we would like to incentivize the suppliers for the uh, miss like on time deliveries and the quality of the delivery they supply to our OEM. So that's an incentivization programs we have via MFG token. Uh, we also have the supplier, uh, the third module is a supplier compliance dashboard where we are checking the different capabilities of the suppliers, what are the ads Dennis mentioned. Uh, the different certifications, their lab reports, all the documentations. And uh, uh, since we work with more regulatory and the very highly classified industry, but at the same time, uh, every industry need to uh, miss, uh, meet the compliance requirements. So that is where we um, handle the supplier compliance also. In the post procurement, this is where the our, we are introducing the power uh, of the blockchain technologies, um, uh, where the traceability because until the part is into your environment, you have the, it is very easy to track, but once it is going outside your DMZ line, then it becomes very difficult in the, the um, it's like a tier one, tier two and tier three going forward. So that's where the, we are using the power of the blockchain technology here. And the basic purpose of the, it's like the, one of the most important feature we are using uh, blockchain technology as everyone knows is that the traceability where we are tracking the provenance of the part, what is the origin of the part, from where the origin comes and all the life phases it goes. So every um, moment uh, of the part has been tracked um, outside the supply chain. So that's, uh, that is where the 
most uh, powerful feature we are using. We also have the digital part library in the post program because when we um, go in the supply chain, we every component has to be um, mismanaged uh, in a right way and it should have the unique identity so that uh, we should uh, know the who is the owner of the part and uh, from um, it's like particularly the company who owns the part and the, what is the other identifications of the part. So those will be managed using the digital part libraries. And the uh, last one, as I said, it is again the trail of the part, which can definitely helps to have the recalling of the, uh, going forward, the recalling of the parts onto the it's like a distributed ledger. So for these um, things, we are using mostly the Ethereum. It's a hybrid technology we are using, Ethereum as well as the Hyperledger. So all these uh, digital part identification and the create, creating the unique token for the parts, uh, that is what we are where we are using the Ethereum. Um, uh, also for the manufacturing tokens and the wallet management, we are using the Ethereum. And for the uh, tra traceability of the parts, we which we are keeping the records that is into the Hyperledger um, network, which is right now the private, and uh, we have the three distinct node into the overall US region. So this is overall our procurement and um, post procurement activity and the, the blockchain side. So we believe that uh, we really wanted to use the, take the advantage of the blockchain technology where we really wanted miss, uh, that is going to help us to improve the quality, uh, definitely the traceability and it, be, it will be a lot much trust because the, there is a lot much transparency and um, immutable records, which can bring a lot much trust between the buyers and the suppliers. So that is where we are seeing the more <clears throat> advantage of the blockchain. Uh, Dennis, you can go on the next slide. Um, so who will be the actor, the next slide, this slide is explaining who will be the actors into this overall um, journey of the part. And we identified uh, some critical actors and uh, this is again coming from the whole supply chain. Uh, so you have the buyers, you have the um, uh, suppliers, but th these are the two ends, but in between the part moves from the different decisions uh, points where the procurement managers has to take the and the identifying the right suppliers for that one. The new NPI engineers, I said that where the low volume is very low, but the very high complex and the supply existing supply chain is busy and they are looking for the quick turnaround on the part. So this is definitely, these guys definitely need looking for the quick um, deliveries of the part. So that is where these uh, NPI engineers play the role. Um, once the part get delivered, definitely the quality controls has as usual their major functions and making sure that uh, all the part related engineering information um, data as well as the color miss lab reports and everything is neat. Um, this is also as we, this is more on the procurement side, but uh, when we comes to the handshaking with the blockchain side, then it uh, enters into the IT buckets and where slowly the things moves um, from the product programs as well as the decision making people like the chief innovations officer or the CTOs, uh, we, who are really looking uh, to have the uh, implementation of the disruptive technology into their systems where the IT pair comes into the picture and they can, they can uh, miss handshake with the procurements to make sure that the implementation of this technology goes smoothly. So this is overall the actors uh, systems into the supply chain we are using right now. Yeah, yeah I think it's just in, uh, one quick note here, you know, it's not, it's not a when we're talking about supply chain in general, you know, there's not one actor that's involved in it. Uh, so we have to keep in mind all these different entities and how they play a role in the decision-making process along just one individual parts life cycle. So, you know, if you think about it that way, just one of those parts in that car assembly of 30,000 parts, you know, that one part can cross all these different entities before it's actually, you know, made and assembled. So really, how do you track that information to see who's, who's, <clears throat> who's had a, had a say in that part throughout its, throughout its life cycle from start to finish. So that's something to really, that we consider a lot and how we can um, incorporate that with our product solution. So really quick, we're going to dive deeper into some of the, the, the products that were touched upon in the previous slide and get you a better understanding of, of what we actually 
have today. And, and keep in mind, you know, these are all solutions that exist today. <laughs> these, these are not theoretical solutions. These are things that we've built already and have implemented and are running on the blockchain and are doing um, different things on, on supply chains today. Uh, thanks, Dennis. Uh, as I mentioned here, the, this is a, now we are entering into the details of the each and every feature. Uh, probably, Dennis, you look more after this part, our FQ dashboard. So uh, why don't you go ahead and then I will go ahead. Yeah, so as uh, Vinay touched on in the previous overview slide, um, so one of our solutions is called the RFQ parts dashboard. Here's really where the procurement teams at OEMs uh, live and, and interact with our system. Um, this is where they're uploading um, RFQ information, BOM requests, and for different individual parts that need manufacturing. Um, so this is a secure portal that they can access. Uh, we have different API connectivity if required, you know, we, if we need to connect to some internal systems of theirs to import certain information, uh, we have secure APIs to do that. But this is essentially a way to organize the data to get it ready for the blockchain. That's one of the huge parts is, okay, you have all this data, um, but it needs to be parsed and organized in a way that's compatible uh, with these different systems. Um, so <clears throat> by having this dashboard, we can organize that information uh, from the OEM. They upload you know, uh, the, the part information, what's the quantity that they're seeking for manufacturing, uh, what's the target price, Manage, manage the different contracts that are happening with POs and RFQs. Um, what's the turnaround time that's needed for manufacturing this part? So all that data is compiled here in our RFQ dashboard. And it really helps um, not just with the organization of the data, but help with the compliance um, portion as well, making sure that, that all that information is transacting in, in one secure area and it's not you know, being transferred via email or, or uh, data you know, being <clears throat> maneuvered via different drives and things like that. So really uh, a streamlined way to help with that procurement uh, aspect of the supply chain. <clears throat> um, so then there's the second half. Right now that you have um, the OEMs dashboard, you know where the procurement teams, engineers are interacting. What about the suppliers, uh, the end tier suppliers, um, the tier twos, tier threes? Uh, how do they interact with this network and the system? So there's a, there's actually a another dashboard environment that we work with the suppliers on. Um, we have our 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 own verification system that you know we built throughout the years of verifying suppliers. Um, but we also you know, work with different OEMs to understand their standards and their needs. Um, but essentially what, what our supplier verification and, and compliance dashboard does, it allows us to provide a, a documentation trail and a way to compile information about a supplier um, before they get verified and activated onto the system. So we can go ahead and say, all right, we need a supplier. Um, they have to have you know, X certifications, X capabilities. Uh, you know, they need to CNC mill, CNC lay. They have to do, um, they have to have ITAR cert. They, they need to be located here in the US. So we can take all that information, uh, compile a profile about them and <clears throat> and also upload all the documentation that's required. So if any you know, certs that they have, we, we require a copy of that cert, we upload it to their profile, and we can go ahead and activate them onto the system. And only once they've been activated, do they have access to any information. So, so I can't just be a supplier you know, that signs up onto the system and starts receiving you know, RFQ documentation. Uh, that's not how it works. They have to first go through this verification process, uh, make sure they have all the certification requirements. In some cases, we also we also do uh, an NPI part with the supplier, make sure that their quality is is up to par, and have them manufacture something. Um, but they have to complete all that information and requirements before they can see anything <laughs> on the network. And this is really just for regulatory. And, 
compliance needs, um, as well as making sure that the, the, the right individuals are seeing the right data. So once we have this, have them onboarded into the system, we can go ahead and, and work with the OEM and say, okay, um, you want this RFQ packet to only go to this supplier. And since that supplier has been activated onto the system, we can, we can match that data to them and only they will see that information. So, so really huge with mitigating um, security risk and making sure that sensitive information is going to the right party. Um, so this is a MFG token that Vinay touched on briefly. Yeah. Um, so here, it's actually pretty cool what we're attempting to do. Uh, as Vinay said, you know, we, we do have our own crypto token that's integrated into the system in partnership uh, with another, another organization. Um, it's called the MFG token. Really, we're using it here to incentivize different mechanisms in the supply chain. One of the you're like, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, so one of the things that we're actually doing today, as an example, um, one area that we saw, you know, suppliers having headaches about um, and not feeling rewarded for their time spent was quoting new jobs, quoting RFQs. So, you know, usually the, the industry standard is you send a, a BOM or an RFQ list to a supplier um, and they, you know, look over that job, um, and provide you a quote. Now <clears throat> that sounds like an easy process, but usually that can take the supplier, you know, if it's a small RFQ, maybe they can get it to you in a few hours, but if it's a large BOM that can take several days to really compile all the information of, you know, what's a proper quote to get this manufactured, um, you know, because figuring out the material costs, figuring out the turnaround time, figuring out the, the tooling required. So a lot of that time spent quoting, they don't get any reward for their efforts. It's essentially just some cost for them. Um, and they're just hoping to win the business at the end of the day. So one mechanism that we have in the system today is <clears throat> when a supplier is matched with an RFQ, um, the time that they spent quoting, they receive an MFG token reward. As a, as a reward for their time spent uh, looking over and quoting that job and providing a timely quote back. And these MFG tokens can be redeemed for other cryptocurrencies. They can be exchanged for those. They can also be um, exchanged for different uh, rewards that we have within the platform. Uh, and we're always looking for other partnerships as well to integrate that. You know, down the line, we can also see, you know, being rewarded for, um, um, you know, covering costs for say tooling or, uh, machining maintenance costs and things like that. And <clears throat> one of the cool things too, it does provide a, a unique way of, of doing payments. Uh, since it is a you know crypto token, uh, you don't really have the same traditional uh, bank fees associated with payments. So that's something that we're experimenting now. It's um, is um, actually you know paying for some of the the work done on jobs with this MFG token. So it's purely experimental phase. There's a lot of, um, of interesting stuff happening here, but we're definitely, you know, have it as a feature built into the system and excited to, to see how it plays out and how the different actors within the system uh, use it. So, so far it seems to be received really well and, and suppliers appreciate the, um, at least for a starting point, you know, getting rewarded for, for work that they usually don't receive any compensation for. Yeah. In addition to that, um, to with the MFG token, this is a, uh, this model is very much uh, configurable where the OEMs can set up the different criteria on what basis I should uh, reward the suppliers. Mm -hmm. One is a uh, within time delivery. Second one is the participations into the RFQ process. Third one is the quality of the part. So multiple uh, criteria can be defined by the OEM and the reward amount also can be defined. So by that way, they will there will be healthy competition between the suppliers and also the performance of the suppliers is definitely going to improve. So this is where we are leveraging the incentivization. So 
And again, uh, it is powered uh, by the Ethereum. Uh, it is on the Ethereum network. So we create a pre wallets for their respective suppliers and the OEM also. So yeah, it's a pretty good feature. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see um, how that develops further. Sure. So I'm just gonna go through these last, I think there's two more slides. Uh, Cause I wanna make sure we have enough time for Q and A. And uh, just really briefly, we, <clears throat> as a part of the uh, procurement and post procurement. Um, there is an aspect of it when you're uploading parts to an RFQ. Uh, we have something called digital part library. Uh, there's some similarities to PLM systems in terms of um, it's just a way to organize and view your part information that's being uploaded into the network, into the system. That way you can just get a snapshot of, okay, this is the part that I submitted to the RFQ. Um, it, it's just a way to organize that data and store the information underneath it. Um, so that way we can, <clears throat> we can process it in the most op optimal way. But this just kind of displays, you know, uh, the, an individual part that was uploaded. Uh, what's the, the part number, the description, the, the drawings associated with that part, the material. Um, and one of the cool features about this as well is that it has a it has a part history associated to it, especially in the procurement area where you can see, okay, an individual team member member within the company say they edited, uh, you know, the material of the part. It'll show that history on the part. So it'll say, you know, Brian at Company X uh, made an edit to the material on this date, or they uploaded a new drawing on this date. So it's really kind of a, ha a handy way to, to track updates as they're happening in the, in the procurement side before it goes to manufacturing. Um, and then one of the, the, the last features that we'll touch on, which is really kind of our, <laughs> at least in my opinion, our, our crown jewel that, that I like uh, um, to show off the most, uh, it's really our, our parts authenticator and tracker. So it's a really unique way of we, we take that information in the part library, uh, we create a record of it on the blockchain. There's a token that's created for it. So this part IP has its own token that's associated with it on the blockchain. So it could be verified down the line. Uh, so say, you know, a part it gets put into assembly. Uh, we can look up that that token ID to make sure that that part belongs to um, a said company that, that, that created it. And then we can also create a QR code tracking record that's linked to that, that blockchain record. So it can be stamped onto the part, you know, a stickered onto the part, etched onto the part and scanned within our system. And you'll see a complete record of that part up to that date, you know, where, where was that part manufactured? Um, it includes data like the, the purchase order ID of that part. Um, when, when did it get processed for QA? Uh, what's the supplier that manufactured it? How many of these parts were made? Um, so all that information is compiled into that blockchain record and can just be uh, pulled up in seconds with the, with the QR code. So super cool. Um, feature that <clears throat> definitely we see it reducing uh, tremendous time with uh, time spent locating critical part information um, in the supply chain, especially in the post procurement. Uh, once it's in, in the warehouse or in the assembly, if it, if it has this tracking ID on it, uh, it, it saves tremendous amount of time for, for providence tracking on that. Cool, so one of the questions that we get a lot is data ownership and compliance. Uh, just to kind of touch on it briefly, um, we do use a hybrid infrastructure as, as Vinay said, you know, we're using different blockchains depending on the, the application and what's, what we think is the best for that application. Um, but also the data, data storage is a huge one of us, a huge thing for our our uh, company, you know, how is that data mitigated? How is it transferred between entities? Uh, we do have use cases where we have certain regulatory compliances that, um, you know, uh, we need to make sure data is being 
stored and transferred within certain regions. Um, so that's something that, too, that we have available for, for more custom integrations um, where we can, you know, kind of configure the architecture for the compliance needs. So it's just something to keep in, keep in mind. Uh, there's a video, but I'm going to leave this in the, the shareable file uh, that, that we send to everybody so that you can check this out later. It kind of just goes more into our parts procurement um, uh, solutions and, and dives a little bit deeper into how those work. It kind of gives you some, some use cases for it. Uh, so we do have different tiers now now kind of jumping into okay how do we make money how do we monetize this um, you know we are a company we need to make sure that uh you know our our team uh, is getting <laughs> compensated for the work and time that they're putting into this but we do have tiers and that fit um most different companies that we've worked with and it's kind of based on a quarterly model um really on the needs of the company if there are certain custom integrations and, and APIs requirements, that kind of falls on a, on a custom quote case by case. But we do have out of the, out of the box solutions that are already available today um, to start going on, really depending on your team size and the amount of data that you want to process. And there is a free version, which is available. Uh, you know, we have people that are signing up on a daily basis to, to check it out. So by no means, you know, don't hesitate to, to check it out if you want to. I'll make sure that there's a, a link in the shareable um, PDF that will be given after this uh, that you can go ahead and, and check it out. Um, so just to kind of end it, give you a little bit of an overview of how our process works. You know, once, once we decide to do a partnership together, we really look into um, the custom use case demo. Uh, how can how can this be integrated within a certain company? And this is more where Vinay and myself spend most of our time. Is really the onboarding process, looking at working with a company uh, to see you know, what are some of their priority use cases. How can how can they make there might be overlap with some of the solutions that we've built already. Um, scheduling you know demos with certain stakeholders to kind of go through the process. You know, we really try to work hand in hand with, with the, the different clients that work with us to try to, um, you know, not make blockchain seem as such a, a daunting task, but really show them that, it, that there is ways to easily implement this into certain systems within their supply chain. You know, it doesn't have to be the whole thing. We know a lot of OEMs have already different internal systems for doing things. Um, so we really see this as being kind of a, a middleware between that, just making sure that the, the information is being transferred securely and that the right stakeholders are seeing that information, especially once it leaves um, the OEM. So, so that's just something to keep in mind. You know, don't hesitate to, to reach out to us. We're here to, to help and ask any questions along the way. Um, but yeah, gonna end it here. Uh, for our presentation. There's some contact information for us. Um, you can go ahead and, and email us and look at our website for, for more information about these different products. Um, but yeah, no, thank you so much for taking the time today. I want to give some time for, for Q&A. Vinay, did you want to add anything uh, at the end? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to us. So and we'll be ready for the Q&A. Any questions? Thanks. Anybody have questions? Please feel free to jump in. Give you some breathing time. <laughs> yeah, and you can always email us after. Um, you know, my email is just dennis at syncfab if you want to get a hold of me. Uh, if you have any product related questions, I'm always open to answer. Hey, this is Chris. I have a, a question for you guys. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we hear a lot of numbers thrown around about, you know, sort of what the supply chain initiatives are to this industry or that industry. I wonder if you guys have, have sort of a back of envelope estimate of, let's say, you know, 10 years out from now, 
assuming that we get full implementation of this and other related technologies. Uh, what do you think it's worth to the industry in terms of the improved manufacturing, improved supply chain efficiencies? Definitely, no, great question. At least from my perspective, I'll go, I'll touch on it briefly, Vinay, and then you can go ahead and, and, and definitely add to it. But I think um, just blockchain as a whole is just from an architecture perspective, I think it will in the most part replace traditional IT. And when I say that, I mean how we store and process data uh, traditionally. Currently today, you know, with, you know, AWS servers, how that or you know Google Cloud and things like that, how that data is being processed between those servers uh, on an architecture level. I think um, just from a security standpoint, um, having worked in this for more on the technical side for for a number of years now, I definitely seeing it. It's just re replacing it <laughs> as a whole, just from. Uh, um, just down the line and you know say five to ten years from now i think companies are really going to see how much more secure in different aspects that uh blockchain can add to it but vinay do you want to add to that really quick yeah sure addition to the security is definitely one point but i will also say the traceability right now that is the biggest pain area uh, particularly into the manufacturing where if really they wanted to trace the part into the supply chain it takes like weeks or months right and uh, by using the new technologies uh, definitely that is going to drop down that time very quickly okay so and that also with a lot much transparency which is uh, another biggest um, like a black hole into the, you have to trust on the suppliers, whatever the data they have given, but uh, there are the higher chances of the alterations of the data also happen. Uh, and the down the line, you don't have much control. So the implementing this kind of technology can definitely bring a lot much value into the transparency of the manufacturing process. That's what we see. Any other questions? Vinay and Dennis, thank you so much for speaking to our audience today. Um, I'm still pondering the fact that there are 30,000 parts per car and the tremendous job of tracking that data. But I like what Vinay said about it being a figurative handshake with the blockchain. Um, I'll be sure to circulate your deck in my follow-up with folks so uh, people can watch the, the video you mentioned. Definitely. Uh, our next lecture will be in two weeks on ethical sourcing and decarbonization. So until then, take good care and thanks again for joining us today. Thanks everyone. Have a great day, evening, morning, wherever you may be. Thanks again <laughs> for taking the time. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks. Thanks all. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.